Alright, so today I'll be showing you how to get Emacs installed and set up on a Windows computer. So the first thing you'll want to do is go and get the latest release of Emacs. Uh, so you can just Google Emacs download and the first link is usually what you want. Um, or you can just go to ftp.gnu.org and there should be an Emacs folder there. Uh, and so once you're once you're there, you'll want to grab uh, this zip file right here. Um, it's just 22.3. Uh, just grab that and save it uh, to your desktop. Uh, so it'll take a little while to download, depending on your connection. Uh, I've already, I've already got it done, and so that'll give you uh, this folder here. And so we can just extract that. Uh, straight to the desktop, which I've already done, and that'll give you uh, this folder here. And inside is your Emacs folder, so you'll want to copy that, and we'll be pasting that into an apps directory or wherever you uh, keep this sort of thing. Uh, so I've got all my Windows files on one partition and all my documents on another. Uh, and wherever you put this, you'll want it to be fairly low down in the directory tree because when you're using Emacs, you'll be typing in file paths a lot and you don't want a uh, big long prefix for everything. Uh, so I've just got an apps folder right there in the root directory of D. And so we'll just paste that Emacs folder in. Um, and so while he's doing that, we can go and we can grab um, a set of configuration files uh, that I have on my uh, personal website. And so that's just at www.scott-in.com uh, forward slash archives forward slash uh, docs forward slash home dot zip. Uh, and so this is just a set of files that'll uh, uh, activate you know, my color preferences and uh, syntax highlighting and things like that, which makes things a little prettier. Uh, from the default uh, Emacs settings. And so that's just a small little file that's already done. Uh, so we've already got that on the desktop. Uh, and so we can just extract that. And so now we've got our home folder there. Uh, and we'll talk a little more about that in a second. But first, let's go back to our Emacs folder, which is finished copying over. Uh, one of the things you'll probably want to do is just to shorten that. Um, again, just to save a little time typing in file paths. Uh, and so inside here, we can actually go into the bin folder. Uh, and we can actually go ahead and run Emacs. Um, so Emacs is up and running. Uh, everything looks great. Um, but uh, I want to uh, load the preferences and all of that that I uh, usually use. So what we'll want to do is go and copy that home folder that we downloaded and paste that into the uh, Emacs uh, folder. And inside this home folder you'll find a .emacs file. Uh, so this is um, kind of a, a setup uh, preferences file for Emacs. So whenever Emacs uh, starts up, he's going to look for this file uh, and load things like user preferences, uh, color preferences, uh, things like that. Uh, so this is the one that I use, and we can just copy it and paste it into the Emacs folder. Uh, and you'll probably have to go into this file, and there are three directories, uh, three paths that you'll probably have to change uh, if you're using a different file structure than I am. Um, and so really at this point you only need to change two of them. Uh, the first is this home directory, which is just the path uh, to your home folder. Um, and so that is just as easy as going back to the home folder and uh, copying uh, this path and putting it in that file. Um, the other one that you'll have to make sure is correct is this uh, site lisp uh, path. Uh, and that is just the path to uh, your site lisp folder, which is right here. Uh, and so you can see that this is actually a little different from what's in the file, so we'll just copy it and replace it. Uh, and you may have to change the direction uh, of the slashes. Um, 
going to use a little different uh, convention, but we'll save that. And so now, when we go to run Emacs, uh, it doesn't work. Of course not. Uh, so the reason he did not load our preferences is because we have not set the home environment variable. And so that environment variable just tells Emacs where to look uh, for all your uh, home preferences and things like that. Uh, so we can just go to My Computer Properties, uh, Advanced, Environment Variables. Uh, and so here we'll want to create a new environment variable named Home. And for the variable value, we'll just want to put in the path to our home folder. And we'll just copy that and paste it in. And hit OK. And so now, when we go to run Emacs, he should load all of our preferences. And you'll see that he's got the black background there, which is something I use. It's a little easier on the eyes if you're doing a lot of coding. Um, so he's loaded all our preferences. Everything is peachy. Um, one other thing that you'll want to do to make uh, starting Emacs a little quicker uh, is to go and add the path to that Emacs bin folder. Uh, to your path environment variable. So we can just go back to environment variables and we can look at uh, the path uh, environment variable here. Uh, just hit edit and we'll just want to add a semicolon and then copy in uh, the path to the Emacs uh, bin folder. And we hit OK. And now we don't have to uh, go to this folder anymore to run it. We can just hit start, run, and type in Emacs and enter. Uh, and he'll load Emacs up with all of our preferences. All right. I think that should be it. Let me know if you have any questions.